Hi guys, I'm P. Wheelie. I'm here to demonstrate how to rig a vexed bottom meat with some of the commonly used baits that we use in Western Australia and all the way around Australia for that matter. So today, if you have a look at the baits I've got here, it's just a mullet fillet, which I lopped the side off a mullet. I've got a, um, a, a small squid or a little California calamari, which are commonly uh, available from most bait stores. Uh, and just the good old uh, scaly, uh, similar to a muley, you can do the same sort of thing, or a pilchard. Uh, and I've got the octopus leg, which is pretty popular for big jewfish, West Australian jewfish, and any of those bottom fish. So what I've got here is a, um, just a, a bit of a selection of the bottom meat from 20 gram, which you'd be using inshore snapper, and then some 200 and 300 grammers uh, for that, you know, 30 to 110 sort of zone. And then I've got the big boy here, which I'm gonna rig separately because she's a bit heavy, um, and that's a 750. They do go up to a kilo. This is the guys they're using for deep dropping, for blue eye and rubies and uh, gray banded cod. Uh, bass groper um, and also um, there's obviously a 500 uh, there as well. The most common sizes are probably uh, 300 down to sort of 80 grams. So, but I'm going to start with um, uh, with a mullet fillet and the big boy. Okay, so you don't want to spend too much time on it, but again, you don't want to make it um, too scrappy and too flappy because if it's too flappy, it's going to take longer to get to the bottom. So generally with a mullet fillet uh, like that, um, you want to get um, a good hold uh, of the shoulder of the mullet, okay, in here. And then basically there's two ways to do it. There's, there's skin out or skin in. So that way or that way. Um, generally, I prefer to go skin in, so all the meat is sort of... Uh, on the outside of it. Um, I mean, it's not rocket science to pin this in. You just got to get them sort of staggered um, evenly, okay, like that. Okay, and then what we're going to do is rather than leave it flapping, okay, I'm going to actually make a bit of a, a bit of a, um, a sandwich with it and just turn that over. Okay, I've got some black magic bait thread there. Okay, and then just, as I said, don't spend, you're not dressing for a black tie ball or anything with this, but just what you want to do is get that bait um, secured for a start so it's not going to get picked off by little stuff. Okay, you want to get the points of the hooks um, sort of nice and exposed so they can hook up, um, hook up nicely without getting too much meat and scale or skin in the way. Okay, and then you want a nice little flappy bit at the bottom there too. Okay, make sure it falls off the, the hook points there. Okay. Sometimes you can wrap further up the, the hook shank up the top, but I prefer to have most, most of it hanging sort of down there. Okay, once, once you've done that, that's, that's about right. I mean, on the boat, you're not going to spend much time doing this, are you? You're not going to spend half an hour on it, so just a couple of half hitches. Pull it, pull it in on itself like that. Okay, so there you've got a, uh, a really nice meaty bottom bait. Okay, the skin's on the outside, uh, sorry, on the inside, so basically what will happen is uh, if there are pickers, they'll attack that, but the skin will stay on, um, and then you'll have something for the fish to eat. Okay, so you just, um, I do it this way with the big boys, because you risk getting a hook in your finger, because this is 750 grams. So what we want to do now is just grab your split ring pliers. I have a dirty set for the boat and a clean set for dry land. Okay, uh, sorry guys, I'm just going to struggle with this a little bit. Okay, once we get that in there, hook points up uh, is probably better, but it's not going to make that much difference to be honest, because you just don't know where the fish grabs it. Okay, so number one, dirty stinking mullet fillet. Okay, there we go. Um, that's done. Right, um, next, I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to demonstrate um, a 300 grammer with an oki leg. Okay, so again, um, I don't skin the oki. Um, I just don't see the point in skinning something that the jewfish isn't going to find a skin piece of octopus down there. So basically, you just lay it out. Okay. Um, get your oki. I have it about that long and I start the oki a little bit further down, uh, up towards the head, sorry. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make the first uh, incision with the top hook uh, about there and go straight through the guts. Actually a little bit further down on that one. Probably around there. Straight through the guts of it. Okay. And then again, just lay the hooks out so you can keep track on where you are. 
doesn't matter whether the suckers are in or out. As I said, the, the jury doesn't find uh, a perfectly presented bait, but you just want it to be um, half decent, you know. Okay, and then the last one through the bottom. Don't have too much hanging off the end because it's just going to slow, it's going to add to the drag, so you're going to need a little bit more weight to get a big, big bait down. But basically, you just want that hook tucked in enough um, so you can just expose that point out like that. Okay, beautiful. All right, now, see how I've started that further up there? So what I do with this is I actually just start binding uh, with the black magic thread, um, pick the whole thing up and just start giving it to her. Just whip it to me, baby. Just whip it. Okay, and once you get to that first hook, okay, that's sort of, you can whip it to the, uh, the Kevlar or the um, Dyneema assist cord. And once you get to that first hook, just poke it out and grab the Oki and the, um, the thread together. I don't know how Spider-Man got on, but this is um, it's pretty um, weak, easy to break the stuff, which is good because you don't, once you've finished with the rig, you can take it off. Okay, so the first one is nicely exposed, the hook point. Move on to the next one. You don't have to bind all the way down the bait um, where there's no hook point because you're just wasting time and effort. So basically, once you get to the second one, it doesn't have to be straight. I, I don't know whether it's better to have it straight or not, just because you don't know where the fish is going to take it. Okay, now the third one. Basically, with the third one, again, just bind the hook point away from the octopus leg, just so there's a bit of a gap there. Okay, there we go. Okay, you can spend a bit more time on it than that again, but in the end, you've got a beautiful Oki leg uh, with the suckers and everything on there ready to go. And then if you drop that down and the dirty big jew fish sees that, he's gonna be all over it. Okay, next one, uh, a squid. Okay, these are just the, this is not a locally caught squid, uh, like the Oki and, um, and the mullet. This is just a, one of those California type ones, uh, Yankee ones, I'm pretty sure. Um, I have used the little pink local ones from up north as well, but I just find these Yankee ones are a little bit better. Um, so again, uh, you can't start the squid too far up uh, because I find the body's a little bit harder. So basically, just start that one. Um, try and go through the feather. Okay, the feather being that plasticky thing in the back as well, because you'll get a bit, bit better purchase. Okay, not that it makes that much difference if you're using bait thread. And again, just space them out evenly. Like that. Okay. Now, you don't really need bait thread with that, because that's just a beautifully presented bait as it is. But if you want to, you can get your bait thread and just give it a good weapon as well. Um, I leave that head on there where that usually gets picked off, it just adds to the stink in the water. But that's uh, another beautifully presented bait. Now, the last one is more, I'm just gonna wipe some of that buzzard's pus off my hands. Um, this one's uh, one of the ones which we're gonna be using this season for the, uh, the pink snapper in the sound. Um, the prototypes we used last year went really, really well, but um, it's all on this year. So basically that's a muley or a scaly or any other bait. I mean, this is just, um, I always have them head up. I prefer it head up personally. As long as that goes through in front of the eye there, um, then you're laughing. I don't put them uh, in and out of the skin. I go right through the backbone. I just prefer it that way, um, basically because um, uh, these are a soft bait. So I just get them right in through the guts there. Um, so it's nice and, nice and uh, secure. Okay. Okay, like that. So you've got your scaly on there. Um, depending on what the snapper are doing, um, I always like to use a bit of bait thread with, with scalies just because um, it does help the bait stay on. And the last thing you want is your bait to be picked off when the snapper actually finds your bait. So just give it a bit of a, a whiz around with the bait thread. Get those hook points out, especially the first one. Okay, then just a half hitch around. Do a couple of those if you've got more time. But, okay, um, I always lob the tail off. It just helps the bait sink. 
helps the bait cast if you want to cast it. Um, it's just a lot better when you lob that, that off. But now you've got a stinking smelly uh, bleeding scaly. Okay, ready to roll. It's got glow and UV in the head um, and you're laughing. That's going to catch your snapper or anything else uh, like mulloway uh, and do fish in shallow water. So there we have it. Right guys, these are a few examples of how I rig a bottom meat and how the, the rigs were designed to be rigged. But you can do it in any which way you like uh, with any which bait you like. These ones are just local baits that I found uh, here in Perth. Uh, but hey, a dirty big fillet of uh, Sergeant Baker or Rass or even a whole sand whiting, they're all going to be perfect on these bottom meat rigs. Uh, they're available now.